What's going on guys? Jack Kellogg here in Venice, California. Here with Evan Shunk. Did I say that right? Yep, Evan Shunk. So Evan's been trading for about what, five years? Five years. And if you go to his Twitter, you'll see that he actually started playing video games and now he is day trading, which resonates with me as someone who also likes to play video games, still do it, did it when I was a kid. Do you think that that has helped you become a successful day trader now closing in on seven figures in profits? I I like to think so. I, I like to think that there's a, a correlation with, because the market's kind of like a game, just trading stocks in general, I feel it's like, kind of like a game. And you have to figure out all the rules and the little trinkets inside the game to get good to it, just like you have to do with any uh, video game, like Call of Duty. You gotta learn the insides of the maps, right? Uh, which routes are the best, which routes get you quickest, but you, in the same sense of figuring out the rules and doing a step-by-step -step basis to master the game. So that's how I like to relate to it. And I think it did help because, I mean, what do you think? Don't you think it, it like, figuring out the entire... <laughs> Can we cut this part? <laughs> there's no cuts. There's no cuts. Tell them there's no cuts. All right. So... He's just, unfortunately, he's only halfway through his first spicy margarita, but <laughs> I'm about 60% uh, through my beer, so I'm a little bit more fluent in the... Fluent in the words. In the words. <laughs> I would say that the biggest thing with trading in video games for me is the quick reaction time. I know that Evan is a discretionary, or uh, not a discretionary, a system trader, and I'm a discretionary trader, but having those quick reaction times where you're able to time bottoms, time tops, no one to add, no one to cut, no one to downsize, that's really helped me coming to a quick conclusion on the, the screen to make my decision. Whereas other jobs, right? If you're a plumber, if you're a truck driver, if you're doing all these other jobs, you have a lot more time to react for the most part. Whereas a lot of stuff on the screen, like video games and other stuff, you have to react within seconds milliseconds right. or you're gonna die in the video game or you're gonna lose more money right in the same sense it's like you're when you start a video game you don't know the rules which guns are more overpowerful like where the edges in the video game because there are edges in video games just like there are edges in the market that is undeniable and you have to spend so much time just watching it to figure it out where those edges are just how it took me forever to figure out like you know what's the best gun and what's killing people so much quicker in call of duty it, so in that sense uh, of finding edges i'd say video games in the market are pretty similar now to get into trading a little bit so evan is the polar opposite of me in the market <laughs> i like to just see something and trade it with the thesis that i just make up in my head based on patterns that i've seen over the last several years i've now been doing this for seven years so seeing the same thing over and over and over again gives me my edge and then sizing in based on fear and greed is kind of where i find myself making money whereas evan is uh if if he's a if then uh how do you describe kind of your system? Specific, there's gotta be defined criteria. Defined it has, criteria. It has to be quantified. So if something yeah. happens, then I'm gonna press buttons, right? Yeah, if it That's matches every for. criteria, then I hit. Mm -hmm. And do you wanna talk a little bit about your system? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is I trade a lot of gappers. And as you guys, I'm sure many of you know that gappers have a very high edge of, of closing below the open. I'm pretty sure the average uh, close below open uh, percentage is around 80% of them around about that close below the open so therefore I have a directional edge right there of which way that stock wants to go to on the day and if I have a directional edge I mean that gives me a, a great idea of where that stock is going and I want to be shorted and that's pretty much a pretty good example of it yeah so I just went hiking with Evan and his brother who he also taught how to trade with his system and his brother has now profited also about a half a million dollars and he started just a few years ago so it's super impressive what evan has done and on top of it teaching his brother and having his brother find similar profitability within half the time uh, which is very impressive Maybe. now i want to get into asking you do you ever feel as though that 
you could be making more money or you feel that you just want to follow your system to whatever it's going to tell you, or are you constantly working on finding new things? How do you kind of manage those thoughts in your head? Because I know for me personally, as a discretionary trader, seeing price action and seeing movement, even in the, the QQQ, like I traded a lot of TQQ, SQQ last year, which is triple leverage ETF of the NASDAQ 100. And I'm always looking for opportunity to make money um, in whatever market it is. Whereas you're waiting for something very specific. You haven't made a trade in two weeks, two weeks, right? I literally could not do that. Like I'd bug out. I've been trying to take a break. It is July. I told the, the Clover room that I haven't really been trading, but I still have been trading here and there. I've probably taken off about half the days of the month so far. And, you know, I want to take all the entire month off, but I just can't stop trading when I see opportunity, <laughs> right? So how do you manage that FOMO when you're looking at the market on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, I, I admit there are some FOMO, you know, days when I'm not trading and I'll go on Twitter and Jack made 100K that day or, you know, Kyle made 80 and whatever. Uh, well, some people just banking on it and I'll be like, ah, oh, that was a good setup, but it didn't match my criteria, so I couldn't take it. Um, yeah, there is some FOMO there sometimes, but honestly, I've, I've gotten good at just ignoring it, discipline. I don't compare myself to others um, anymore. I, I stopped. It's just, it's just noise to me now, and honestly, it'll just put me down a little bit, <laughs> comparing yourself to these multi-millionaire traders. I mean, I'll believe I'll get there one day, but you know, you got to go at your own pace, and you got to stick with the, the trading style that works for you. And um, discretionary, I used to trade discretionary, and I, I did okay a little bit in the beginning, but... I started doing way better actually system trading um, and so I really stuck with it and and it really just fits my personality it keeps me comfortable and my emotions out um, did I answer that question or yeah that that was a good question now if somebody is struggling with discretionary and they're struggling to find consistency over I don't know I'd say three to five years of putting in work and just not finding that that mental clarity because some people i'm going to be honest with you guys some people have it some people don't have it like some people need very strict guidelines to make money other people can show up at the market um myself my other friends and we can just kind of see an opportunity and just know how to trade it right but other people will screw that opportunity up or whatever it is if you wanted to get into system trading evan how would you suggest somebody get started without kind of giving them too much because i know it takes a lot of work in a system to to find it i'm not we're not going to give you guys evan's exact criteria yeah. or parameters to make money but how do you start to mm -hmm. become a system trader i think to start you have to just um you got to get an excel and you got to track data you have to track market data something very simple to track just simple and there's more entries than just this i'm not going to get out everything but just simply go check gappers you know gapping up at least 40 or 50 and above you know and just check your entries of what would happen if you got in at the open and then you got out at the close what would your profits be doing that same positioning throughout a whole year just some basic thing i mean you can do that also for overextended gap downs you that for gapper plays uh there's all the short patterns just test those two variables always track the market cap always track the float always track um uh, resistance uh if it's gapping into any resistance um check uh there, there's every variable you can think of the 100 sma whatever you want you track that and you correlate that um you put that in your excel and you do analysis based off um is the win does the winning percentage get up bigger if it gaps into resistance is the winning percentage better if it gaps higher uh, you know, just ask yourself all these questions and um, start there oh, and track all the data surrounding it. And then always watch out for black swans because the thing with gappers, it only takes one to absolutely blow you out and you lose all your money. So you have to have a max level where it's like, okay, it spiked too far. I got to get out because this is a, what is it? Uh, this is a variable that's outside the norm. I guess you could say. So you want to track the spike percentage. If it goes too far, when do you have to get out? Because if you can't manage that risk, you know, when that black swan comes, you're, you're going to get run over and you'll blow up your whole account. So you have to know when to get out and you can track that through, through data. 
Yeah, that's that's a really good answer. And honestly, if you guys are struggling to make consistent profits, if you guys are struggling to have like even one green month, like I would kind of throw discretionary out the window for the time being. Not that you should be giving up on your dreams and that type of trading, but you should start just do some system trading as well. Find out what works for you. There is millions of strategies in the market. And sometimes if you're trying to emulate what I'm doing, maybe you can't emulate it, but you, you are more able to emulate something that has parameters and something that has right. a system. And that being said, Evan has his brother named Chris uh, Shunk. He's a little bit older than Evan. I was hiking with him in Yosemite as well. And he's done very well. You know, he's probably the best person that I've seen do trading in, in such short time. Right. And a lot of that has to do with one, Evan already had a system figured out and taught him. Mm -hmm. And two, he followed the system and it made him profits. Yeah. But And now he does his own analysis. And now he does his own analysis. Yeah. So how do you think that you helped your brother out so much um, compared to seeing other people try to take on students or yeah. other people that uh, just yeah. can't really teach kind of what they do. Like we know there's a lot of very fraudulent people out there that are teaching absolutely, you know, scam, scam stuff where they're having people chase their buys and they're dumping into them. We've right. seen it all in the, in the penny stock markets, the wild, wild west out there. So how do you think that you've been able to really yeah. have a, a 500K well, one, student? One, my, my brother, is, he's actually, just, he's a really good learner. He's always been a really good student. And he knows how to, he knows how to learn well. He really does. He's always had that about him growing up. He, um, but the other thing that I want to mention is that it's also because I really think system trading is really good for beginners. For, for beginners, when you do discretionary trading, you're you're gonna lose so hard the first probably two years. It's hard to really get the feel and the pulse on the market. It's taking Jack. Jack, how long did it take you to find that pulse to really? Yeah, it was about like two years, maybe. Twenty months from me before months. I turned a profitable yeah. month. And and that and and in discretion, it's a really hard to to master that pulse in the market of of when it's time to get out and when it's time to get in. But for system trading, you have rules and data backing up all of your moves, so it really can keep your emotions down and, and allow you to build something predetermined of knowing when you can get in and out. All the work will come from actually not the market hours, but from outside the market hours of knowing if this criteria comes, I know exactly what to do and I know exactly what to get out because I tracked years of data of this and um, all my moves are now predetermined and planned. And with that, it can really set a beginner's you know emotions up to I mean it can really set your emotions up to keep them away and not to act on those you know not act on fear or not act on uh, you know greed. greed or anything like that because you've already predetermined everything and it keeps your your trading in, in check I, I feel system trading I think it's good for beginners because then and then also when you go through the data it will also help you with discretion because you'll, you'll watch, you'll see the price action and it will allow you to, like, if you start with system trading, it's a good starting because you're getting an idea of how these patterns move and you'll get an idea of how they do everything with predetermined checks and balances of when to get in and out. Uh, and it will actually, eventually, you can then move into discretion because I also do think discretion, you, what was it? I, I read it in a Trading Wizards, it said, Discretionary traders have more odds. I feel like uh, it was. An, I forget who. Of exponential growth. Of exponential growth. It's rare for system traders to see that exponential growth, but there are outliers. There are system traders that do have exponential growth, but it's more common to see discretionary traders. I feel like to really hit that exponential growth, um, and I think that's because I'm not really sure. What I, I feel like it's because. Uh, what do you think it is? I think. I, I think that um, system traders have more drawdowns than discretion traders yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A really good discretion trader can um, have, right. you know, they can stay at their equity highs uh, more often than system traders. Like system traders are going to have a bell curve no matter what. And a mm -hmm. bell curve is something like you have a line kind of going through your equity curve and you have bounds up and, and leaps down and kind of trending up. 
um, and you'll see that with a lot of the uh, system equity curves but sometimes with discretion traders you can see them just make money just go, go sideways yeah. make money go sideways um, yeah. especially if they're cutting their losses uh, quickly and if you can do that over and over and over again as a discretion trader you have yeah. that bankroll and those odds and that size to to scale more than taking those those losses yeah that's a good answer uh, I, I believe that as well because every system does have drawdowns and there's there's no avoiding it and i would say the drawdowns would be worse than a you know a really masterful discretionary trader absolutely and that does take into consideration that if you are a discretion trader you can lose way more than the system will allow you so if Right, if you're true. making money as a discretion trader and you make money with one strategy or two or three strategies where it's working for three months, two months, whatever it is, and you think you've mastered the stock market um, and then you start to lose and you start to go bigger because you know the pattern is going to work and you just continue to lose, 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 and you'll end up giving everything that you made back, whereas a system can kind of cut off those losses a bit quicker and you can you can see it and analyze it whereas sometimes <laughs> discretion you get so caught up in your head so caught up in your emotions that before you know it yeah. you've you've blown up yeah yeah system trading does allow you to be uh keep your emotions out of it it really does i literally just set my trade and i walk away from my computer i just put a stop loss in i don't even watch it sometimes sometimes i do sometimes i don't depending on my schedule and the day and now just to kind of uh finish up the interview i want to have a question here for Evan about what are his goals for the short term and mid term and the long term and where he sees his trading going over the next decade. Are you still going to be trading the next decade or is this just something where you're looking to make money and do something else with your life? No, I'll be trading I, with my whole life. I love it. I mean, it's, it's my passion. I love analyzing, finding new patterns. I'm finding a new pattern right now with my brother, actually. Actually, he's, he's the one that found this new one. And um, and I love doing that. And uh, also, I like teaching it as well. I, I think I plan on opening up a, a room maybe next year to teach people how to system trade. Um, and uh, I plan to look. I plan to get where, where Jack is right now in his career. That's that's my goal to you know get to that multi-millionaire trader status. Um, and that's that's where I see myself. All right, man. Cheers. Cheers to that, dude. Cheers, I believe man. in you. Thank you. And that's really it. If you want to be a boring system trader, come to, to Venice, California. <laughs> Later, guys.